Really? I once. I, oh, let's hear your story first. Had cyber sex. <laughs> <laughs> I was 13 years old cool. in like a chat room thing <laughs> with a girl. We've all been there. And I was like, oh man. Oh, but do you, you don't even girl. know if it was a girl. It for sure <laughs> wasn't a girl. There's no way. It only took me to like two years ago to realize. I'm like, wait, oh no. Wait, you had that, a flashback. That was a pedophile. <laughs> Definitely. For sure, a pedophile. Okay, so you lost your cyber virginity at 13. <laughs> way before my real virginity. <laughs> No, you cut your own hair. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's last week you had a different haircut that you did yourself. Right. And right. I thought that looked great. Yeah. And now I decided to make it look bad. You went through like a Britney Spears like moment. I, yeah. I said, I'm, I'm ready to break into a, a car and smash it open with <laughs> This it. one does look a little more like sketchy. Like bad. Like your first day in prison and they're like, you got to cut out the hair. Oh. Like right. somebody behind you, V for Vendetta style. Did you have like the mirror back here and you're like, Oh no, I don't do. I just, I, I oh, just, just feel it. I just feel it oh. back there. So you don't use a mirror. Mess. Could be a mess. Can we take I a look at the back? Yeah, yeah. You can take a look. Oh, at the back. Did. It looks good. I said he looked kind of arms forced. Good. The back somehow better than the front. I'm surprised <laughs> that the line is. Pretty the face good. is on the front. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. <laughs> that's impressive. You should think about this. Maybe as a second career. Yeah, just Lines, like shaving, lines. shaving people's heads yeah. with no mirrors. With no mirrors. Yeah. Or he just okay. feels. He just feels. Yeah, it's very holistic. Yeah. It is kind of how you do. That is kind of how you do. I just go by go by feel, but the gradient. I mean, honestly, it's just a, a hair shaver that has different settings. What is it? Is it it's a like number three? It's a number this three. This here? Yeah. This is the highest. It's a six. The number six. Oh, okay. I love I mean, how men talk about, like, oh, are you a two or a six? <laughs> <laughs> what are you? See, I've been going to a stylist, not a barber, forever. A so I'm like, you know the difference of a stylist and a barber? Probably the price. Us. Well, it's it's definitely for sure. The price. For sure, price. <laughs> But scissors, a stylist, a hairstylist is trained in scissors and a barber is trained with the buzzer. Oh, interesting. Hence why they know the two and six and I, you and me are like, I don't know what this is. I don't know. I would love if you got a skin fade just once. I couldn't do it. Why? Yeah, that's why I would love I, if you I, did it. I just feel like I, I don't know. That's the, the reason I go to the stylist that I never liked my haircut my entire life. Mm -hmm. Every haircut I got till I was like 20, just hated. Just, I, hmm? Sorry. Yeah, she was the first one who I, I've loved every haircut I've had. I've been loyal to her for like you stuck with 13, 14 years because of this. Do you want to shout her out? Or? Shout out to Haley Bloomfeld. <laughs> H, so H you've never go. been to like a, a, a barber barber shop? Oh, I have a million around. times as a kid. Okay. Because that's what I thought. I'm like, you got to go to the manly place. Got to talk. Right. Got to get shit off your chest. Get buzzed out. Yeah. Uh, I never liked the haircut. Right. Yeah. I, I um I once had like hair like you like maybe a week ago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. But like I always look for a, like a nice cheap barber shop, right? Because mm -hmm. like how difficult is men's hair? It's not that difficult. You go to Chinatown. Exactly. Seven I bucks. used to get the the four dollar four dollar cut. In four dollars. Yeah, cut. Be four dollars. Right. What a and deal. It just grows, it grows out. I know it's tough for. But I went to a black barber shop once. I was downstairs in the basement, and I had the hair like you. And but uh, they just used clips like clippers, mm. and it took it took him. An hour. He didn't care. Well, he didn't care. He was just there, just going and going away, uh, just using the razors. And I, and I figured he was going to use scissors at some point, but no, he was just doing the razor on the top. Oh, like wow. just like the short yeah. razor, just a short razor, not even just, electric. Yeah, just cutting it with the the razor. Wow, did it look, look good? After yeah, well, yeah, it looked great. Are we look talking great. about like the same razor I would ra shave my face with? Like a straight razor? No, no, no. Just like, like a buzzer. Clipper, like, clipper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but it took like an hour, and it was like twenty bucks. He was like, yeah, great. And I was like. This twenty bucks was an hour worth of work. You did a lot of work here, man. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, all take, lined take up, super up. nice. I didn't line it. Uh, I got nothing to line up. Uh, I don't even know how to, what a lineup is, to be honest. With you. <laughs> do you know what a lineup is? I do. Yeah. Tell me about just like lines, like very like straight, oh. like the yeah, like, like the came fade. Out. I forget what they what the term is. What is it? You're asking the wrong. I don't group. know. A flare. Oh, it's like it's like sharpen everything up, Sharp, right? So it's yeah. to keep the angles and. Yeah, draw keep attention it fresh. To yes. Yeah. Um, and and how about yourself? Do you get to? I mean, my hair like costs like four hundred dollars. Yeah. I cannot complain. No. Yeah. 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 No, it, they see it. Like, I need to get a haircut so bad. It looks nice. As soon Thank as you, you walk in, they're like, "This one, this one, just, just dollar signs <laughs> all around me." Yeah. So it's it's expensive just because of how much product. 
Yeah. You have to use like for coloring. And... You do what? But you only go maybe once, twice a year or? Yeah, like t twice, three times a year. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the thing. Men's got to keep it uh, short. Like uh, they go every month or so or two mm -hmm. weeks, some people. Yeah. If I want to get it cut though, it's yeah. $100. $100. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Minimum. Do you have a stylist that you want to shout out? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my girl Taylor. Hey, everybody hey. tuned in today because they're like, we don't want to talk about hip hop or comedy. No. We want to know where they get their haircuts, <laughs> who they're paying. That's what it's about. Gotta yeah. have a good. Gotta have somebody to tell, make you look good looking. Darcy once had dreadlocks. No, uh, cornrows. 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 Yeah. It was That's a, a bold look. It's a choice. It was cool. I looked okay with it though. Just like I looked so good with cornrows that Ian was like, not bad. No, I was like, <laughs> I'm not riding the elevator with you, dude. You're he getting says, stared down right now. Not bad. <laughs> it was bold. Can you have like a cutout of like his face with the cornrows? Yeah. We should put it up. Maybe if we can get a picture from yeah. the archives, we'll put it up on I the got screen. one good photo. You know what? I liked him better when we took him out though. You look like, like who is a, James Riff Franco's Raff. character? Who is he based off of? Uh, Riff Raff? Riff Raff. Yeah. 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 That's a good movie. It was actually kind of like a uh, a music video. Yeah, it was fucked yeah. up. Yeah, two hours. They could have done it a lot better. Yeah, yeah. I remember that was like Selena Gomez's first or one of their first like, well, she's doing this kind of movie now. Yeah. And is that what inspired you to get the? Uh... Uh, no, I had it way before he did. So. <laughs> You're like Riff Raff copied me. <laughs> he did. Me. You still got the cornrows underneath that. <laughs> yeah. Underneath this right now. <laughs> what was the like motivation behind that? Uh, we had a, a friend of ours who got braids all the time, and yeah. they suited him a lot. And I was like, I'm growing my hair out. No, no, I'm it was sunny. Paid. Sunny. Yeah, it was sunny. Of That's there's a That's beautiful all. thing about like not seeing race in that moment, I guess. But at the yeah. same time, I'm like, dude, Sunny's got brown skin. But he there's looks, a reason he, he looked looks good. Really good with yeah. Yeah, he looks good. Yeah. So no white person has ever looked good with James it, Franco. Looked great with fucking cornrows. Did you ever when you did wait, you ever wait, go wait, to Mexico did, as a kid? I correct? did. Yeah. Did you come back with the cornrows like white girls get? Well, I went to. We were more of a Jamaica family. We oh, lived okay. In Jamaica, and yeah, we did. I did the the braids. Um, but they're like it's <laughs> did hard. You full braids. Full braids. Oh yeah. yeah. Hurts. Like, when I was a kid, and um, it was more like getting it done that was like the most painful thing because like they're just on the beach, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're just ripping your hair out, like, and you're so just sitting there ass. sobbing as a child, just crying, but then yeah. coming back to school but, pink with oh, just yeah. sunburned skin, puka <laughs> shell necklace, and it just sounds like the beads, just like <laughs> <laughs> waving it. Yeah. I definitely went to Mexico as a kid and came back with like a fake Rolex. And was like, no, it's real. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it in Mexico for ten bucks, but this one's real. You told all your friends. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And I had the puka shells as well. Oh, the puka. The shells. little bleached tips. Mm. Not a good look. Rax is right because you can make fun of me for cornrows if you get them done because they hurt like they hell. do hurt. They hurt so bad. Like I you're have, saying, I shouldn't be able to mock you. You should be able I've to mock me until it. you've sat through getting cornrows. It's like getting a wax. right here. Oh, I it think hurts you guys should so do an bad. episode where you <laughs> we all get cornrows yeah. <laughs> and see who cries first. Yeah. That's yeah, right. we'll call it the cultural appropriation show. <laughs> yeah, and it just really it'll be our last episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll try it on an axe, Jamaican axe. I got waxed on camera once, like everything. Were you like Kelly Clarkson? Yeah, 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 like Steve Carell. Yeah. I understood though; it bled. It bled. It yeah. bled. What do you mean waxed on camera? Like, I think it's pretty self-evident. <laughs> Imagine you had to get your vagina waxed. That's what I got waxed, uh, not my vagina. Not they waxed it right off, and a penis was underneath. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, I got the the pubes, so to speak. Everything. Oh, so you got a Brazilian. Got a Brazilian, because my like girlfriend. Like by choice. Well, at the time, she was just like, "You should know what this is like." You're always like, "Oh, you, you know, you should get a wax." I don't think I said you that. You said that. Too. I doubt it. I doubt I would say that. But maybe she was like, "I was like, okay, I'll do it." Like how how you know I want to experience how hard this is. Turns out, fucking very hard. Did they like lift your balls and go like? Uh, I had a friend. She did it actually. You're sorry. Wait. Yeah, sorry. Do you want? <laughs> I had a I had a friend who lifted the balls. He was a good friend. No, no, no. Do you want to give a shout out? Oh, he shout was out. a good she friend. He did the wax. My okay. girlfriend did the Your wax. And did then the my wax. friends were filming with the camera, just you... laughing. Okay. And I think I was covering my balls. Maybe okay. we could cut some. I mean, I guess we could watch the too. video. We're definitely not playing <laughs> that on this. Put the video on here. Yes. Well, like girls, like when you get like a full wax, like you gotta like bend over and like spread your. They see everything. Yeah, yeah. The wax. Oh, the wax lady. She's like did, your home. Did girl. your girlfriend do your do your butthole too? No, we stopped at the. Uh, well, that's not the. Full, I was bleeding and brilliant. like already like throwing in the towel, being like, "You guys are champions. I'm I'm out. I can't. I don't want to do this ever again." We should do that on the pod. Get our assholes waxed. Get our assholes waxed. Yeah, <laughs> just immediately taken down them, from get YouTube. Get the corn road. 
No. That, I don't think I have the confidence to go to like a professional waxer knowing she can see everything. Like women, you guys have that relationship. So it's more powerful than like the stylist barbershop relationship. I mean, it's still like, it's still like, hey, like and she's like doing it. She's like, so like, what did you do this weekend? Shh, like, what? Oh, because she's seen a million a day. Oh, yeah. But this isn't Taylor though. Taylor, what do you mean? This isn't your stylist, Taylor. No, this is not going to take care of I that. mean, Taylor would probably do it for me. But... <laughs> it's just but, yeah. asking, hey, can you do this this time? She's like, this is not my job. Uh... <laughs> gonna cost you extra yeah for sure <laughs> i'm surprised Darcy. you haven't got anything like lasered or wax like you, you know you got that tattoo dude. lasered you, you got Do it you removed yeah tattoos just two but i had three and it was I, regrettable it was tell re us about it, it. Well, what, what was the tattoo first of all that you got uh, lasered off it was just we a girl with a shell necklace once on the pod yeah it was just like i can't i can't even describe it was the stupidest i got it at 17 it was mm -hmm. the dumbest tattoo i've ever had and I wore it until I was like 23. And then I spent a year getting it lasered off. Do you wear what was a that? tattoo? I, 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 I donned yeah. a tattoo. Okay. I donned a tattoo. Uh, yeah, it was dumb. And I went in every two months and got the most painful laser of my life. I heard that lasering more it hurt, hurts painful. 10 times more. Was it just yeah. a portrait yeah. of you with cornrows? It was just me with cornrows. <laughs> it was James Franco's face on my... <laughs> I don't... Yeah, I, people are like, oh, what was it? I, I don't know. It was like some you, tribal you thing. You know what it is. You know what was on your body. You paid know. for it. You it signed up. You chose it. Yeah. <laughs> Never looked. It was tribal. It was tribal. <laughs> oh, okay. That's like the tramp stamp for men. That's yes. what it was. Yes. And it, it, was, was, it, was, it was in that position too. It was like wings right above his right. like yeah. uh, oh, it was an cubis. <laughs> no, it was an iron band. It was it's right across the old. Uh, Essentially, yeah. Just a, is it gone now? It's gone. Totally gone. Totally gone. Totally gone. And I heard those are expensive too. Like the To get removed? Yeah. I got a deal from this chick because she's like, oh, you're an influencer. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, okay here's a deal. And I was like, sweet. But I she's had like, to go. I do it with fire. <laughs> Only catch. <laughs> I do it with red hot metal spoons. Um, I used to make a joke when people asked me if I had tattoos. I'd be like, oh, I did. But I was in this motorcycle accident, so not anymore. And it was just like a dumb, like, <laughs> dumb line, I would always say. And then one time I said that and this girl was like, oh, my God. I also have, like, fourth degree burns on my body. Oh, no. And then immediately I was like, well, I'm never making this joke again. Aww. Because then I had to backtrack and be like, oh, no, I was just saying nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's funny. Yeah, it was my it was a friend of mine's girlfriend. And afterwards, he was like, yeah, she never liked you for some reason. I'm like, I know the reason. Couldn't Yikes. even look you in the eyes. No, yeah, without weeping. Oh, you, you admitted to it uh, being a, being a lie? A lie? Yeah. Oh, what? oh, you think I should have leaned in and been like, yeah, I was going to buck 80. Didn't no, see the no, quarter. Just like get out of the conversation, but don't admit to lying the whole time. Right. You just uh, slink away slowly and then never be friends with these people again. Yes, just delete them, block them. <laughs> do improv actors do that a lot? Like kind of improv conversations? like Probably. Yeah, probably a joke is thrown in now and then. <laughs> In, in a poor setting. Yeah. Remember that yeah. Remember that time we went to that art shop and I told that guy I had all these displays at the art gallery? No. Remember that when we were at, at Spadine? Because, like, that's just fun, like, to just lie. Because lying, you lying, you lying is fun. Lying, lying is, is fun. fun kids. You were there and we were buying art, art supplies and he was like, oh, what do you, he's like, what do you do? And I was getting some, like, paint or some shit for something. He's like, oh, what do you, I was like, yeah, this is, I'm working on a thing and then it's, they're putting it up at the AGO or whatever and you were like, Giggling? Three feet away, laughing so hard, and I was like, "Yeah," and I just, it was just fun to lie. When people do I'm that, I sometimes this guy can't do a straight face when I know my yeah. friend's lying. And Darcy used to do this thing where he would walk an inch behind people, like pedestrians. Yeah, and yeah. I couldn't watch it. It was like amazing at the same time, but yeah, I'm not a good accomplice for a prank. That's funny, big I prankster. Need, I need better accomplices. Yeah, women do that all the time at the bar. Yeah. Lie? Yeah. Yeah. For free drinks. Yeah. What are some go-to lies of yours? Oh. I mean, I'm not a liar, <laughs> uh, but friends, like it's my birthday. Oh, does yeah. that work? Oh yeah, like me and my my other best friend back. I grew up in Blue Mountain. You so, did? Oh, that's why you're yeah. a snowboarder. Yeah. So in the village, like tourists were coming all the time, right? So I was a party promoter there. My girlfriend was a um, bartender. And we would go out and make like stupid little lies. Like old men would be there, like rich old men. and. We'd be standing there and my girlfriend would be like, oh, my God, it's my birthday. And then I would hear her say that and have to go along with it. And then we would get bottles of Vuv bought for us like oh, shit. constantly. And it was like that was kind of our little thing. So shout out Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, I hope you're lying somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure she still does it. I, I'm not a good liar, but I realized something recently that's kind of cool. You can fake being asleep. 
Like it's kind of like a, a lie in the sense that if you don't want to talk to somebody, you just like. <laughs> AKA your girlfriend? My girlfriend, a friend who comes in. I'm like, oh, I'll just. You like, realize uh, that one, like that's the move you do as a child. Right? Yeah. It's magic. It, that's magic. It's amazing that you can do that. And it's like forgiven. It's like, oh no, he's asleep. Like we can deal with this tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go cut my own hair. <laughs> See, Ian's been asleep for two days. And I really got to talk to him about the, our relationship problem. Sleep do you sitting like, up? snore as well while you do it? No, because that's a giveaway. Uh, also a hard thing to do. <laughs> fake snoring is kind of tough. Mm. I, I just think. coughed while trying to fake snore. Yeah. yeah. No, no, fake snore is a dead giveaway you're lying. Mm. Do you have any tells when you're lying at the bar to try to get these guys to get you for drinks? Or do you're I have any tells of, sorry, like... Like anything gives you away, like me doing a fake snore would give me away. If you're like, or giggling when Darcy's telling a lie. If you're like, yeah, it's my birthday. Do you notice like, or it's just such a good story lie. We're just really good at it. Yeah, that's do. terrifying. That was the answer I thought was coming. <laughs> I think if you're going to lie about birthdays, you got to know like the horoscope. Oh, yeah, so that is true. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, true because right. guys homework. have called her out, but she's she's pretty quick with it. So. Oh, oh, do you know? Do you know the, the horoscope chart? Like uh, Some, some. Oh, I see. I'm Pisces. Aries. Aries. Taurus. Taurus. Taurus, yeah. Taurus. What? It's December. What's December? Again, Sass? we need none, none, none of Sass? us. I think maybe. Right. I think probably. Am I right? I think I so because Libra I mean, is sound, sound October. Cool, you said it. like you know the the short form of the Sag. The Sag. And Sag, yeah, yeah. Sag is yeah. Whatever comes slang. after Scorpio, because Scorpios. Is that what you want? Scorpios, uh, uh, Scorpios, November. Uh, and October, no, and October. Shout out to Drizzy Drake. Yeah, yeah. He is a Scorpio. I once texted my friend uh, AJ, comedian. Shout out AJ. And said, dude, it's Drake's birthday today. Just as a joke. October 6th. Yeah. But I was just like, can oh. you believe it? And he was like, you're such a loser, man. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> it's a bit. Yeah. It's a bit. Did you do your uh, Spotify rap? No, I didn't share Because you know what? I'm an Apple music What do you user. guys think about the Spotify rap? i uh, seen other people's? Yeah. I don't care. Exactly. I, I hate them. None of you shared it? No. no, even as an artist, I just think it's it's silly. I've got actually to pick your brain on something with that because mm. I've heard that because a lot of artists are buying fake streams on Spotify. Yes, and you can you can spot it too. Like people like Ooh, it's like half a million streams, but like one point two k hours listening. It's like what? Oh, so the bots just don't listen to it no. for more than a second. Exactly. It, right. So it's like you can see when someone's mm -hmm. faking it and it's just like it's silly to me. And there's so many different forms of like music platforms. Like it's not just Spotify and like, yes, like what you were saying, I'm an Apple guy. Like it, it's just silly how people base people's success in the music industry on Spotify when it's like not they don't even pay you like they pay you does nothing. Apple music pay better than Spotify I don't I think it's pretty up to par but the best Still thing shit. that I've learned is like Sirius XM pays really well oh really yeah so if you if you're getting spins on Sirius like you're getting paid pretty good that's that's cool because they were they were kind of been like an OG of that with like Howard Stern a mega deal years yeah. ago and like they I know they pay comics there used to be a lot of comedians on Sirius XM mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, and it pays. Like, serious XM these days. I, I I have it. You have it. Yeah, I pay for it just because Howard's so good. Howard Stern. I'm familiar. <laughs> just the blank face. <laughs> I was like, just I just I thought my he buddy had, Howard. I figured he had retired. I figured. No, he, he's still making he's, still making his money. But I, I had heard that people were buying like not just bots for fake streams, but actually like access to your account. So people would look at their Spotify rap and it would be like, oh, I listened to. I don't know, uh, the Foo Fighters 7,000 times this year. I don't even like the Foo Fighters. Yeah. And uh, not just calling out the Foo Fighters for no reason. They didn't do this. <laughs> but like that people, they didn't even realize because people had hacked their accounts just to kind of get those numbers up. Yeah. It's just oh, wow. like the whole music industry is just fake, you know? Right. So. Every industry is fake. Very true. Not the haircutting industry. No, no, no. Fake. That's real. You got to have you straight can... skills. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. <laughs> the self-taught. I don't know if you're competing with that many people, the self-taught. Uh, self maybe you are i don't know oh, i don't man. know I, you know i feel bad because um you know most people don't cut their kids hair anymore right and i feel like that's the last thing that people would do because kids used to have terrible haircuts well the bowl yeah the bowl i had the bowl for years I right because my parents would cut my own hair uh, <laughs> uh and and you look like you look like trash but now every kids look good they got they've the got style, the fade. They got the gel happening yeah and like they you know congratulations people spending the money on it but like how easy to just 
let your kid look trashy for a little while. I was so worried that we had organically pivoted into talking about hip hop with our hip hop star. And then I'm so glad we brought it back to kids haircuts. Man, it was on your pivot. It was I know. on your pivot. I'm not saying I'm good at this. <laughs> You sort of yeah, had we sort of had a mushroom cut back in the day, didn't you? Everybody I was under like the impression <laughs> back there. I was told that I was the first one in my town to have a mushroom cut I by the were. by the hair cutter. And I told this to so many people, and people would bully me in high school for this <laughs> fact. They were like, that's fucking bullshit. No, you didn't. We all had it. I right. love that. I th right. did you guys do the M, &M haircut? Oh yeah. The, the bleach blonde. The bleach blonde. Yeah. Grade seven, yeah. I bleached it. Yeah. My younger brother did it first, and because mm -hmm. he was cooler than me, which is sad on its own. I was like, <laughs> "I'm gonna do it too now." Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I did not have the personality for it. Like yeah. shy, like yeah. a, just like a shy kid with Eminem, Eminem's haircut who didn't like swearing. <laughs> you didn't like swearing. Stand. I didn't stand. swear until I was 13. Oh my goodness! I remember the first swear I ever did too. Like, was that like a choice because of like religion or like? No, just being a goody good. <laughs> When's the first time you drank alcohol? Uh, like 16? 16. 16. And when did you lose your virginity? 18. Still yeah. got it. Here's how dumb I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today, guys, any takers? Uh, here's how dumb I am. I asked my mom how old she was when she lost her virginity as a kid. <laughs> I know. Already we're like, what is this? And she's like, oh, 18. And mm -hmm. I was like. So that set the president. And so then I'm like, I got to beat my mom. And then all, I, A, I didn't. Wow. I tied my mom. And, and C, my mom obviously lied. Like she picked the legal age. It was probably like 14, 15 right, in the right. 70s. What else you did you ask her in that conversation? That was where it ended. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Tell know. me about when you lost your virginity, mom. Your age, <laughs> where it was. No, because I think. How was it? Uh, I think, you know, that we'd had the do? talk and I was probably like, oh, how old were you when you started having sex? And she was like, oh, I waited till I was 18. It's nice that you have such a close relationship with your mother. <laughs> You're painting a different picture no, than I like. No, no, it's great. <laughs> you know, congratulations. It sounds nice. Thanks, sounds man. Nice. Russ, what's the craziest haircut you've ever had? Oh, God. Oh, no. my God. Is the theme haircuts? Today? Is this sponsored by Supercuts? Did you sign some deal we, we don't should, know about? We should. We should. I think it was like the lesbian cut, you know? Grade Ooh. seven, spikes. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. it because yeah. like inspired by a pink kind of thing? Maybe. Right. Oh, yeah. Good. It's funny how like there's trends of haircuts. Like even right now, like mullets are back in. Because I think Theo Vaughn. The comedian. Oh, I love him. So I think fun. that kind of blew up the mullet, and I think the mustache yeah. is a Top Gun offshoot because every guy right now has a mustache. Well, it's mo November, right? November descended. That's not why, is it? <laughs> Imagine it. I'm like, oh, month, I keep seeing these everywhere. <laughs> Might have been because of November. But yeah, no, like maybe Theo Von started that. But I mean, hockey guys have been doing it forever. Yeah, they're big into it right now. Are you a fan of the male mullet? No, no, I can't say that I am. Did you ever do the shaved when girls were shaving one side of the head? I didn't do that because I was scared that like when I wanted to grow it back, it would be like, psh, yeah, you know? it's a commitment. It is. You're looking commitment. at a couple years to get it back. Yeah. And I never was like one of those girls that like dyed my hair crazy or anything no? like that. Like I've always, it's always been like this. This is my signature. Is that natural? Your brand. natural blonde? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've had like highlights. Right. But, but yeah, mostly. It's my signature. It's this is the blonde cow show. Shout out Taylor. Shout out Taylor. She's going to love that. <laughs> <laughs> Not the waxing part, though. She's no. like, don't ask me to do that. She would, though. That's good friendship. Yeah. Well, well, let's get into some rap then. So what age were, uh, was it that you lost your virginity? <laughs> to rap? <Yeah. laughs> like or the first two. time your, your pure ears heard it? <laughs> um, Like, so, yeah, serious question. When did I lose my virginity or when did I lose Yeah, when did you lose your virginity? I think it was like 15, 16. Nice. Yeah, nice. I had a boyfriend three months. Three months. What? Well, very long. in love with him. Oh yeah, what's his name? No. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? A podcast tried to get. Yeah, how about you? Nineteen. You were nineteen. Nineteen. Oh shit! You were roasting so me so bad on eighteen. Mm. All right, eighteen is fine. But you guys are, grew up in the city, right? You're both from no Blue Mountain. Oh yeah, Blue Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. He's not listening. <laughs> to me, because I'm from a different province. Uh, this is all the city. Yeah. All I'm of Ontario terrible. is just the city. When did you lose your virginity? Six we're all sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a room. Is it true that you did the, you started with the backside sure of the mountain? Did. Put in Blue Mountain. Backside there? of the mountain. Yeah, we were, I thought, I thought if you had sex, you got pregnant. There was no, or like got AIDS or something. I remember. Yeah. Yes. I, we had this conversation. I was like, yeah, I, I thought it was a non-negotiable. If you had sex, you either had a kid or you had whatever, STD. So like we, I was like, you know what? 
Anal sounds pretty good. Oh, that was your first time? That's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. That's a strong move. That's a bold That's... move to throw it down there like that. Yeah. Was the girl a virgin? Yeah. So it was like, cool, we're in this together. Let's try this. And we, did you guys think like... that counted? Or were you trying to do like that Christian no, thing where you're like, this like, doesn't count? We were just really bored. fucked up her first time. Eh? She <laughs> probably was like scarred for life. Nah, I don't know. I don't. I can't. I can't speak for her. That, the, that, uh, the, that, that sex education in, in Vernon isn't very good, is it? You guys. Would... I brought the sex education over from Regina. Re oh, we didn't even right. have it before that. <laughs> Regina is a gross place to grow up. That's why I would imagine. Yeah. It's crazy now, though. Kids today, just like the arguments parents have. I mean, I don't have kids, so I can't really. What are, What are the arguments? Just like kids when when do we start teaching about it? Oh, and, I like, see. I think early. Yeah. Early for sure. Yeah, well, now with the internet, right? you're going to have your, your back door of Virginia taken from Darcy. At the <laughs> I had, I had taken from. I'm I sure had, it was a mutual. I sure it was. Who knows? He's from Regina. Early. I don't know. That's what they do in Regina, I guess. Did That's you notice? what they do in Regina. I definitely noticed because when we grew up, uh, internet was a little bit slower as oh, we went. Yeah. How old but, are you guys? Dial up. I'm 33. Yeah. Same. same? Okay, and Yami's a little bit older than us. Yeah. So we all grew up with the... <laughs> he points at his hair. He pointed at a couple grays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why you chopped it off. Right. Oh, it all makes sense strong. now. But the internet, like streaming porn wasn't a thing. And I definitely noticed no. there was a pivot with the generation that grew up... When I started, when I was dating like girls even three years, four years younger than me, who grew up with just like Pornhub, easy access stream, I was like, oh, this is a different thing now. Yeah, I didn't even just, start grooming phases, right? That you were... No, because they grown up watching. No, <laughs> two years, but like that's a major difference in like internet. Yeah, yeah, things move fast. Yeah. So, what are you saying that uh, they have a different kind of take on, on on? Well, what I'm saying is like you guys said, you have to have the talk earlier with your kids mm -hmm. because those kids grew up with iPads. They're gonna see so much more porn so much right. quicker than we all did. Right. Well, you yeah. had to like look for it. Yeah. But like now, it's like so easy to find. Like if you ever look at parents, look at their kid when they give their kid their phone, their YouTube history is like boobies. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like they're gonna find it because it's not hard to find. Yeah. yeah. And that's like very true. that's gonna have an effect. I'm yeah. happy that us, our generation, didn't have like iPhones. It was like just the like cell phones were starting. Do you ever check your screen time report now? Sometimes. It's in well, mine's insane. How, what are your hours? What were you logging in on? The Mine screen? was like 31 hours last week. In one day? Holy no, God, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm working extra hours. I had to go to Inception just yeah. to get it. No, but I'm like, all day you're staring at a screen. Like, that wasn't when we grew up. We weren't yeah. staring at a screen all day. No, and we were a lot happier, weren't we? We were happier. I don't know if that's just because we got older and our <laughs> dopamine just yeah. shrunk away. Yeah, well, it must it must have been nice because you were growing up on Blue Mountain, so you have the the hill right yeah. there. Yeah. Snowboarding, you get to, to do be outside all of the time. Yeah. Uh, do you miss it definitely like it's yeah i do and like toronto is just like even walking around yesterday in toronto is just like it's just such a concrete like there's not a lot mm -hmm. like there is a lot to do but it's just the same like stuff you know like so if you had your choice yeah, to use would totally. you go you go mountain view or beach view probably beach view because oh. i'm sick of this weather yes <laughs> nicole and you, got, still, and you got to get your braids. Yeah, you gotta get exactly. Yeah, go back for more exactly. of that. Exactly. Like, dream scenario would be, like, in Costa Rica right now. Instead of on this show. Yeah. Well, yeah. no. Of course, yeah. Do you here. find there's, a, a like, a correlation between, like, uh, surfing and snowboarding? Like, um, Yes and no. Like, I went to Australia a couple years ago, and it was, like, I tried surfing. And it's a different ball game because it's, like, a lot of upper body. And, like, mm. it's different. Have you ever... I've I've tried surfing a few times. I've gotten up once yeah. and fallen apart. We and went I, surfing together, did we not, in Malibu? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As we do in Malibu. <laughs> as one would <laughs> when <laughs> surfing the Malibu uh, coast. No, but snowboarding I can do. Uh, yeah. I mean, because I, I, I skied as a kid, but uh, I switched. To, I didn't make the switch to snowboarding when it got cool. I stayed on the skis like a loser, and now skiing, not cool cooler. still. Uh, but but everybody switched back sort of. Yeah. Because more fun. Snowboarding. Skiing. Skiing. Yeah, um, but snowboarding. No, yeah. snow snowboarding is more fun. No, yeah, I can do both. Yeah. It depends what you're better at. Skiing's easier to learn, but harder to get really good at. It doesn't depend what you're better at. Snowboarding is cooler. <laughs> no, not anymore. But you guys say that as non-skiers. Like, uh, Aaron 10, and I, 1080. Rax and I grew up on the Any video mountain. game you ever made. They made a video game about 1080, snowboarding. Yes. Yeah, not that was because it was 1998. Yeah, it was, it's when it way was cool. cool. Like freestyle skiing's cool. pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. what I'm talking Oh, I'm not but talking not about like, moguls <laughs> no that's still not cool no, or mini blades team. do you remember mini blades i had some too i yeah. feel like you would be a mini blade but I, they were not cool 
and like no. skiing without poles. Like I remember people thinking that was cool for a second. Not yeah, cool. Not cool. Here's the no. nail in the coffin. Skiing is not cool because cross country skiing. There's no cross country snowboard. <laughs> Just because it's inefficient. That's it. Just That's a guy it. waiting for the bus. <laughs> That's gonna be the most privileged podcast. <laughs> I mean, uh, hey, he's out here nice cutting his own hair to save four bucks. <laughs> We're talking about growing up with fast internet. Yeah. Did you? What was your first internet though? Do you remember AOL? Yeah, that's yeah. what I had from Canadian Tire. I had a disc that I brought yes. home. Yeah. The disc would come in like the cereal boxes. Yeah. Remember they that? were just trying to get you. Yeah. yeah like then I, the AOL cereal box. I was so excited to get on MSN Messenger. No, like Cheerios. Oh, yeah. What are they calling that? Huh. Did you guys get on any MSN or like IG or what was it? I was on ICQ. ICQ. Oh, that was the first one before. Oh. And there was AIM, was AOL, like Instant Messenger, mm-hmm. chat rooms. Yeah. This is chat OG rooms. internet. Nexopia. Nexopia. A-S-L. Shout out to Western Canada. Number, age, sex. Location. Wait, location. And then you just lie. You're like, 22, <laughs> yeah. Miami. <laughs> totally. I once... I, oh, let's hear your story first. Had cyber sex. <laughs> <laughs> I was 13 years old cool. in like a chat room thing <laughs> with a girl. We've all been there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. Oh, you don't but even do you, know you don't even girl. know if it was a girl. It for sure <laughs> wasn't a girl. There's no way. It only took me to like two years ago to realize. I'm like, wait, oh no. Wait, you had a flashback. That was a pedophile. <laughs> Definitely. For sure, a pedophile. Okay, so you lost your cyber virginity at 13. <laughs> way before my real virginity. That was you were so sure. Practicing. Yeah, what I was practicing. What were you say? What What could you possibly be doing at uh... thrusting star? Oh, no. Pumping. Star. <laughs> panting, panting, panting star. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, star. That Do never not. normally happens. <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. That's so wild if you really think about it. Oh my god, it's insane. Now kids can just pop VR on and just be like... pop on their flashlights. Yeah, it's wild it's how insane. technology is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> Who's giving these kids flesh? Segway. Kids. Yeah, clean segue. So you pivoted recently with your music. Yeah, what's up? Oh, I was, I was, uh, but you have pivoted a bit because I listened to your new yeah. album, which just won album of the year. Hey. Yeah, independent awards. I saw. I, I wasn't sure if you were going to bring the trophy, put it right here. I was thinking about it, but I thought that'd be. It's like a status Definitely. thing, just like right here and be like, you yeah. guys have won very few podcast awards, I noticed. <laughs> And when it's a Grammy, that's when I'll bring it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it's a Grammy, we'll have you back. Yeah. You can put it right here. Carry that around. You get the necklace made out of it. Definitely. I would have it as a doorstop, like Drake. Does he have that yeah, as a doorstop? Fun. Yeah. That's pretty fucking sick. Yeah. Really sick, actually. That's if really if you win a Grammy, will Yami have to get a professional haircut? Yes, and then you have to get cornrows again. <laughs> again. Cool. If she wins a Grammy, you do do uh, that. hundred percent. Okay, deal. We love Obviously. that. If she oh. gets a Grammy, you have to put that tattoo back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Get a tattoo of her winning the Grammy. Deal. Yeah. But I noticed your new album. You you sing now a little bit more. Yeah, like I think that. Well, first of all, in Toronto, the rap game is just very toxic, mm-hmm. especially being a female too. Like there's a, there's an image that you're supposed to kind of up uphold mm. like the ice spice and like the cardi b and then you know and i'm and i'm different from that like i wear hoodies i'm a tomboy like i don't i i don't know it, it was just i think in growing in music like just kind of finding my voice and finding out who i am and like my biggest influences are like black and drake and jesse reyes and you know like that mm. kind of vibe and like with post malone too like he started as a rapper and then now he's singing country songs. So I think it's really awesome as an artist to challenge yourself and like, like just kind of evolve, evolve. Yeah. Do it, you know the rapper, Canadian rapper, Sunreal? Yes. So he's from our town. Yeah. Really? And Do you know him? I knew his sister, yeah. but it's been really cool seeing that Ascension yeah. and also similar where he look at when we were in high school, it was all rap, yeah. like hardcore almost gangster rap yeah but now it's like it's singing it's song it's kind of folky sometimes but yeah. it's his own thing and it's like and that's where he's found his success and yeah that's cool because yeah i listened to your new album and i was like wow hey i didn't know you could sing yeah like i just assume because i'm tone deaf nobody can sing <laughs> then when you find out because i've heard you rap and like some of your older tracks like you're 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 going pretty hard yeah like yeah. I, I don't know like i just think like as you evolve as an artist like you kind of find your lane and i want it to be different like and have my own thing because I think being like your own person kind of helps you with the success because yeah. 
like look at Drake. Like when he started, he was like people were just making fun of him for singing his own hooks, for singing his own yeah. hooks and doing that. And like, and he's one of the most successful rappers in the world right now. So then that's what's really cool about him is he can lay, you know, have amazing diss tracks yeah. or like super fast and then switch a slow up and then also release a huge R and B tune or a pop yeah. tune. And it, it just shows like you still have that ability that yeah, that and I and I've proved myself like I know that I can rap, but it's like it also gets to a point where it's like how what do you write about? And like I'm not sitting here gonna rap cap about how I'm living this life. Meanwhile, like I have I've I've been in the trenches, I've done you know things, but that was my old life, and I took writing from that and applied that to my raps back then, and then kind of got out of that lifestyle and like now i'm different so you just kind of evolve and i and it's good it's fun if i was rapping about my life it would be a lot sadder <laughs> asking my mom about her virginity <laughs> getting but, sunburned on vacation but i like people call me the taylor swift rap because like i would just write about like guys and stuff you know and, mm. and but like, that makes sense like yeah. that's what you're going and also that's like that's what people that's relatable mm -hmm. like you look at it gets the people going <laughs> it, gets, it gets the people going They're like i'm going through a breakup yeah and i think it's important um especially because rap is so male dominated like there's not really a voice for females and like what we go through right and and girls listen to rap too so it's it's cool to like have that voice do you find like female performers like city girls and stuff are kind of breaking that barrier a little bit of like that they're because i'm noticing again just from my own perspective as just a, a fan yeah like you didn't used to hear five years ago you always heard every rapper say suck my dick and you know but now like you're you know you're hearing people own yeah yeah the pussy the pussy baby <laughs> and i mean people hate that like but it, exactly what you're saying is like guys talk about their dicks all the time so like what's the difference with a girl talking about her pussy yeah right? exactly in that same way in that almost like antagonistic way of yeah like, and it's like I, I don't remember hearing that before four or five even like missy elliott i don't missy know missy elliott was and she, like yeah? trina and like remy ma and like all those little Kim. Little, was she? Little yeah. Kim was probably like the staple. Like Little Kim is what made Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Be, right, they know? all built the shelf. Yeah, and yeah. but and like now it's like the Ice Spice and all that stuff. But it's still like women in rap are very sexualized. Which and is, that's what you're kind of trying as you I'm own yourself to, more. Yeah, be like more like a J. Cole, like and and right and like which was really cool. Like uh, Cool and Dre, who are the producers of like Lil Wayne and like rick ross and then like they, they he told me he's like you sound like a new age lauren hill and that was like one of the biggest compliments mm. Mm. i could ever have right nice. so yeah it's just kind of be about being different i mean it might take a little bit longer because i'm not on the path of everyone else but i'm just gonna try and stay it's so true. good though like your your new stuff too exactly like it, it, it reminded me almost even a little bit of like Adele with like Cindy. Yes. Oh my God. I love that. No, like it was like, as I put it on, I was like, oh, this is not what I was expecting. Yeah. Not that your other stuff wasn't good. Yeah. But it was just, I was expecting it to be more kind of like hardcore rap. And then I'm yeah. like, oh wow. Like this is like, I think if the right people hear it or yeah. if that gets out, like, it's, Definitely. I, I don't, you know, it's, it's good. It's legitimately fucking good. Thank you yeah. so much. But like Black is one of my be biggest influences. I just saw him in concert too. And, it's just crazy like yeah. you you take from so many artists and just kind of make it into what you want and adele is one of them so it's cool that you said oh that. cool yeah yeah sure. that's sweet what's your writing pro process like do you have a team no i do it all myself oh, exactly. um, i write it for her she's <laughs> like what's this nerdy there? white guy's <laughs> take on this lost my virginity at 18 <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make a song yeah yeah it'll be it'll um, be a banger yeah but it's usually like like right now i'm kind of in a writer's block not gonna lie um i try to take an hour every day to kind of work on stuff um i'm in my head a lot um because it's like i've done a, like this this is my second album so it's like you kind of got to go through life in order to like write stuff and save it be, up some stuff yeah you know like well that's what they say like malcolm gladwell to. says the writing is fun like yeah, that's that's actually the easy. Part. Yeah, it's you you everything else you do in the day. That's where you're getting. That's the writing. Your inspiration. Yeah, exactly. And stuff. Like and and I'm happy right now. Usually when I'm upset and sad, that's when the yeah, best stuff comes yeah. out, yes. right? So I'm in a good relationship now. I'm 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 living. I'm happy. So it's, it's hard. Time to break up. It's time, <laughs> no. it's time, time, time to end no. it. So it's, no, no, we got we need the next album. We need some <laughs> diversity here. No, and he knows that he better not hurt me because uh, that'll be my next <laughs> Then you're going to win that fucking Grammy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's like, I, it usually comes from a dark place. It's yeah. writing. Yeah, that's and, great. It's 
great. But that's like comedy too. Like the best yeah. stuff is is sits in that. There's a lot of I find, and Scott's heard me say this before, parallels between hip hop and stand up. Yeah. In the sense that I say like, Tupac said. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna make this make sense. Tupac said like rap about women mm-hmm. and money. Mm-hmm. And like that was the key that he told Biggie to get a hit. Yeah. And I always say with Scott, it's like it's the same for stand up, but it's lack of women, like being bad at dating and lack of money, being yeah. broke. <laughs> it's like the opposite. Exactly. What makes a good hip hop song also the opposite makes a good stand up. But it's true what you're saying, like the comedy comes from such a dark place. Yeah, the best stuff. Same with like exactly. Yeah. The best songwriting, you know, it, Adele's first album didn't blow up till she had that heartbreak. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, you make art out of the shit. Yeah. Totally. Like that's why everybody gets jacked when they break up with their partner. It's just like you you're you're in such a I think like darkness breeds creativity for sure. For you can sure. you gotta use that fuel, right? You've got that energy that's yeah. like either gonna be sad and angry about it or you can kind of funnel it into something. Yeah. And you wanna be like, fuck you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you wanna get revenge. There's nothing yeah. better. I have a friend who does the funniest thing where he runs paid Instagram ads <laughs> on all his ex's houses. Stop. Of success stories about him. Like oh, when he does well, oh he God, like pays it. to have it so that they just see. I'm like, that is the craziest and funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. That is pretty sick. I'm Every like, time I'm they take open up their phone, me. yeah, you guys can steal it. <laughs> it's just like, wow, he's doing you gotta, great. though. You got to get those Instagram ads. Like, and that's the fucked up thing about the industry. It's like you can make the best song in the world or you can do the best stand-up in the world and if if you don't have money to advertise it it's gonna go nowhere right or if nobody sees it or even like with these algorithms yeah we've talked about it like you'll have some video that gets two million views and it's not the video you worked hard yeah. on it's not the one that you poured your heart in yeah it's like the one that you're like ah should i post this piece of shit yeah i know that's always the case and it's out of your control yeah it's just like it's like the lottery right like you're gonna yeah you know when it or not and then the idea is that if you keep doing stuff, eventually when that thing goes, they look back and go, oh, wow, she's got this amazing body of work. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I just got to keep creating and not give up. And like that's like 10 years. It takes 10 years. Yeah. 10,000 hours like to be successful at something. And you, re- it's really true. And I've really noticed that lately, too, where you see all these actors back in the day or singers and stuff and they're doing projects and it's just like a little part right you're like wow that was like 10 15 years ago and now to see them now that it takes it takes that long mm-hmm. exactly exactly like i don't know when when did you first start rapping or getting the music or have an interest i mean 2017 i would say that year mm. was when it start like the spark started and i wish like i wish that i i had the confidence to start earlier but it, it was definitely a conf- like a confidence thing where I'm like, no one's going to care, you know, and then and then TikTok started and like all these things. And it's like every like social media just makes people want to create and do it. So I was just like, I might as well put it out there, put it out. And, there. and it's scary. Like you're failing in public or succeeding in public. Yeah. Like it's a vulnerability every time you post something. Oh, you're like, yeah. hey, is that like I find something I was unexpected with this show it'll get lots of nice comments and then one mean comment and i'm like and you think about oh god those yeah. ones you're like they're right i saw somebody write we should almost just read them on the show but they were like <laughs> oh, do shit. they sell podcast equipment on like 50 percent off black friday sales and i was like oh burn yeah and it's funny just how that is and when you but when you're putting music out there like i'm sure it's it's like oh. you're like it's yeah. the same way where you're like hey i'm putting this out there can you explain it's... that burn to me? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're implying that we got a discount on these. The only reason we have a show I and see. that we shouldn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the comments. Yeah. Like in the beginning of my career, like I would read the comments and yeah, they would get to me. But like now I try not to read them. And you know that like those people that are saying those things like are really mad at themselves. Right. And really hate themselves. And that's mm-hmm. why they're projecting that energy onto you. And it fuels me. Like, there's some really funny ones. So. There are. They, you got it. And some of them are actually and really I'm just funny. like, shit. Like, yeah, I feel there. like the, the negative ones are the ones you want because they're, they're like um, children, right? Whenever children make fun of you, there's a hint of like some real deep seated <laughs> stuff, whatever it hurts you, right? So uh, the negative comments, you can, oh, okay, well, there's something there. Maybe, yeah. Maybe right. You take a little bit from it yeah. and either let it fuel you or kind of be like, yeah, fuck, maybe they're right. Yeah. There was a 50% discount uh, at Best Buy Pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got a great deal on these. Yeah. But yeah, no, like it's the comments. The comments are interesting. Oh, comments. Yeah. That was something I wasn't expecting with like putting more comedy out there and stuff yeah. to like affect me as much as they did. Do? Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, like you're making art, you're making music and yeah. this person is making a... You suck. 
Yeah, and uh, like, like a lot of the the comments, like the hate comments, are the same thing. Like like oh, like they'll call me fat and shit, and like say things like I'm old. Like like it's always the same kind of comment. It's mm. the ones that are like witty and smart that you're like, yeah. Yeah, the witty <laughs> ones. Like I saw one recently. Someone was like a room full of betas, and I was like, that is pretty good and <laughs> not wrong. But that's why like the Jimmy Fallon like mean comment yeah. thing is so funny. It's so funny. Oh, mean tweets, yeah. Yeah, mean tweets. Yeah, mean tweets. So good. But if you're not getting haters, you're you're obviously not doing something right because someone's sitting there being jealous about. Someone's always going to hate your thing. So if you're not getting haters, you're not doing anything. Yeah. You're not putting anything out yeah. there. You're not taking risk. Yeah. Do you think if you had told yourself in 2017, like, hey, this is going to take longer than you thought? Like, would that be something? I know for me, I, I started professionally acting at 19. Yeah. And like, I thought I was going to be Timothy Chalamet. I thought I was like <laughs> a year from now, cover of yeah. 17 magazine. And straight out of Vernon. Straight out of Vernon. The, the world has the, to know about this guy. That's my rap album, Straight Out of Vernon. <laughs> that's sick. Actually. Sells three copies. No, that's sick. <laughs> but uh, but that's the thing, right? Like it's like you gotta remember those three people that bought that album. They're fans. Yeah. And those. That's what drives me to continue. And like, even with these Spotify rap things, you 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 see them and you're like, oh, like someone's doing better than me and it gets in your head yeah. as an artist and stuff. That's why I don't support it because it's just like, who gives a fuck about your numbers? It's It should be making you happy. And Je- do you know who Jelly Roll is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just won a Grammy for or something, some sort of award. And in, in his speech, he's just like, I don't know, you got to pull the speech up, but it was like, I, he's 38 and that was his first. Mm-hmm big award and he's been doing this for so long and it's just like you just got to keep going and and if you keep going you'll eventually get to where you want to go well there's no cap on it is it there's no real like you don't have to yeah. stop at a certain age if it's feeling fulfilling you you just keep on doing it. yeah a thousand percent there's a million stories morgan freeman didn't really book till he was 50 yeah. like and he had he quit a, became a great rapper, so. <laughs> <laughs> really good rapper. but that's he's the thing you just can't quit and that's why people aren't successful at this because they just they sit there and they're like, I'm not getting the success that I expected I was going to get by this time. So they quit and then you'll never know, right? But if you continue to like put in that little bit of work, you'll get there. Yeah. yeah. It, and live with the fact that it's like, hey, I would rather just be still making this, still putting this stuff out yeah. here, even if it's three fans yeah. versus quitting yeah. or, or whatever. It's still a chance for you to become Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> yeah, Timmy, if you're watching, I'm coming for you, baby. <laughs> Willy Wonka. Still. Willy Wonka 2, the straight to DVD <laughs> release has me in it. Coming straight out of Vernon. <laughs> That's such a sick album name, though. Straight out of Vernon? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like... Uh, you should do a spoof. Sunreal may want it. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, um, do you find the Toronto hip-hop scene is, is fairly supportive? Like... Like, no, not people don't gas each other up or like. No, um, like I try to stay out of the politics because obviously I'm not like one of these like hood girls like running around. No, you were saying it's pretty toxic. It is so toxic. And just like all these rappers, you know, just like fighting each other. And, and it's stupid. Like I obviously have my favorites, but like it's even if you support one, like another one, like it's it's just toxic. Mm. So. You know, we have so much talent in Toronto and like it's it's really sad to see like Houdini, like Bully, like all these guys that could have really, you know, come out of the mud, uh, not not be here anymore. So it, it is sad. And, and it's a lot of it's to do with jealousy, I think. And like people, other rappers seeing that this rapper is doing this and this and, and they don't want that. So they just go and fucking shoot them like it's 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 crazy. So mm. I just try to stay out of it. But. How do you yeah. find the audiences in Toronto? Are they uh, supportive? Are they are they hyped to see the the show? Because like Toronto's known for having quiet audiences, yeah. sitting on their hands, and yeah, like, like nodding, but not really getting into it, not really being energetic. But. Yeah, and I don't know what that is because like I've been around, like went to LA, I've been to England and yeah. and all over, and and seen like the scenes in other places, and it's just it's a lot different, like especially in LA, like going to shows there is crazy. Like people are so supportive and everybody want like even if it is like like you know fake Mm -hmm. people still like sit there and like yeah like so supportive but in toronto like even at the black show that i was just at like all the openers like no one was showing love to the openers they were just kind of standing and watching and rolling loud when rolling loud was here like there was artists that were going on stage and being like where the fuck is your energy like i don't know if it's to do with the weather i don't know if it's just like screw face capital but Toronto is is difficult. Like there are little pockets of people that you know are in the proper 
scene, I guess. I don't know, but it is a lot different here than other places. It's funny because, like, obviously Ontario as a music scene is is some of the biggest artists in the world are yeah. from here. Sean Mendez, like Bieber, Drake, uh, yeah. Jesse Reyes, like it's, it's the weekend, Tory like Lanes. it's insane. Tory, Tory Lanez, free Tory, yeah, racks, in racks, yeah. and and that's the thing. Like, I I think Canada is just like really overlooked in a sense, but like I don't know, America just wants the the big big artists to come from America, right? So like So these other artists had to have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. Toronto wants the the artists to come from America. It never nobody ever gives them uh, their dues until they leave and then come back. Right. It's a similar thing with with the comedy or acting and entertainment scene. We see a lot of that too. We're like once you're in LA then it's like you're wanted back home a lot more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like that you see that with Presta, like Shadow Presta. Like he I was like doing shows with him like a couple of years ago. And then all of a sudden it was like he went to America and then really, you know, like went up and mm. started dating Koi Ray or whatever the fuck her name is. And everyone in Toronto is like, oh, my God, like it's so successful. But when you go to America, like you're around celebrities all the time. It's just like on a different scale. Right. I found that like when I was in L.A. versus here, sometimes even at auditions, it was almost like they'd be like kind of like oh like what what can you do like kind of like oh you think you're good enough like you think you belong to be here yeah versus in la i found people were like happy to see you they were yeah. like wanting you to do well i don't know maybe it was just me but i found that the city was really positive for like because some everyone had moved there from another country or another city with a dream what doesn't matter what it is but to do with entertainment whether it's writing or music producing yeah. rapping something so it's like there was kind of like this community of like every billboard in LA is for a movie or for an album. It's very much like an entertainment city, which I I love the love, energy of that. Yeah, I love it there. It's like one of my favorite places on earth, even though it's like super dangerous. Mm. It's like you just feel, as an artist, as as a creator, like you just feel like you're like wow, this is incredible. Like yeah, because even if most people aren't succeeding, it's like they're still at least like they're there for something. Yeah. They're hustling in yeah. some way. Like everybody's got something that brought them there, yeah. which I really liked about it. Yeah. Scott wanted to live in my car for a minute when he was going through a breakup. <laughs> but even there too, like you have shows here, like an artist showcase in Toronto and like artists will go and like they'll perform and then the second they're done performing, they'll fucking leave. Same thing for comedy. Same thing with comedy. And so in Amer- in LA or whatever, you go and like people stick around because you never know who's going to be in the room. Right. And and that's a big thing. And I don't know like what what's up Toronto's ass, but we got to figure it out. Well, you're still doing it. It's like you just got to like, yeah. you can't control that so you're like oh i'm just gonna keep making stuff keep yeah it out and there. also like the music like getting paid here too is like hard like for shows and stuff like you got to do a lot more corporate stuff than just having like a showcase and selling tickets and doing it right we need like, to get you the i'm loving it fuck justin timberlake he's been making that too <laughs> or like some kind of good corporate call all yeah. state <laughs> if all states listening we'll get a new jingle going no and i know like rappers like uh in toronto that are doing that like i'm uh, one of my everything oh sean i have a track with him called hoodie go stream it now he just did like a jingle for like I don't know like KFC or something like you know what I mean like getting get paid. Crispity, crunchity chicken. Yeah. A friend of mine, a, a comedian who's been on the show, his dad made the Pizza Nova song. Three, See, like, three, and that's and where the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Barry Manilow started. He made. I think he made State Farm is there. I think that's Barry Manilow who. You are tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I'm like yeah. I'm so tone deaf. I can't even. They used to have to cue me to start a song because I couldn't hear beats. I, I would literally play... That's crazy. I would play what? Guitar Hero Anything. on mute. Oh. And I'd play my own music because the matching up the song never helped me. I was just matching colors. Can you dance? No, I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> Guy gets burned in the sun. Yeah, I can get sunburned. I'm good at that. I'm good. Are you at liberty to talk about what you're working on now? Um. Yeah, like I got like some things in the works. Like... I really, really want to do like a punk album. Like, a punk album? Yeah. Kind of like an yeah. MGK moment? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Not like maybe punk, but like more like guitar and like maybe more post Maloney. Like, yeah. there was like a little EP. Like, I have a couple songs like written and like in the pr- production. Um, I'm also working with um, an artist named Jordan. Okay. Um, he, JDR or JDRN. I don't know one of those things, and he's like a Juno. Artist. Yeah, I've heard yeah, of him. Yeah, he's got some. He had some big songs. Yeah, like, yeah. no, he's a very big Canadian yeah. artist, and his girlfriend Kaylee is my um, engineer. Oh no way! Yeah, so we're just in the process of that. Um, 
I'm just getting that together for is post one of your influences oh definitely yeah yeah i yeah. like when he first came out i think just because his look or maybe just like jealousy or something i did not want to like him and then i heard him a in lot of men say that like... it's jealousy or something <laughs> like but then i watched him in a million interviews and i'm like this guy is so cool so, cool. so grounded such so as a genuine nice. person that i'm so like genuine and yeah it really like a perfect blueprint and how super to... talented too and like i like his blueprint and how he you know white like even before white iverson mm -hmm. or whatever he was doing like little rap things and like just the exactly like the path that i'm kind of following like i don't think that i'll ever thing. do country music but cut to you opening at the <laughs> cmt awards yeah. she is the taylor swift of rap mm. yeah there just becomes the taylor swift just the opposite way Imagine Taylor started rapping. Oh, she kind of raps in some of her songs. Yeah, shout no. out her. She's a smart businesswoman. Though. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a T Swift stan, a Swifty, a Swifty. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen the Eras tour? No. Then you're not selling the fuck out. Is making money for November next year. They're already. Yeah. Selling. Oh, oh, like did I see in person? Or even uh, in the film version, I suppose. Both, yeah, both they're, they're, doing crazy numbers. Yeah. Her not Beyonce. real Swifty then, I suppose. And the thing, the cool, the cool <laughs> thing not. is, like, all, most of the women are the nominees this year for the Grammys. Right, that's great. So it's pretty dope to see. Mm -hmm. No, that is. I was like, <laughs> gonna make it like a joke. You I'm were like, gonna make a joke. I know. And then the, the eye contact just staring me down. You're like, don't even say anything. <laughs> I got so scared. I was like, <laughs> um, Darcy, you went to school for music production. Yeah, for a brief second. Fanshawe. In Vancouver, ah. the Arts Institute of Burnaby. Did you Vancouver? think that you wanted AIB. to be a artist on the performing side thing, or were you like, or more in the engineering? Yeah, I mostly did it just because we got free studio time as students. <laughs> mm. So we did were you lay some time. bars down? Don't lie. I did. They were awful. Uh, <laughs> God, I, I sing them sometimes. One. You need to bring. You that sing out. them sometimes. But then uh, the real money is like doing post production for films. And I still have a few friends that I went to school with there, and uh, their names show up on some films. And I'm like, yeah, I should have done that. Mm. And uh, said yeah. I moved here. Well, that's you. it, though. Consistency, right? Like, you look at 15 years, yeah. they stayed in it. Like, whatever it is, that's the formula for anything. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, what, I did. What did, would you rap about? Girls. <laughs> I, Yemi, I love Yemi. He never Putting lets anybody get away door. with anything. Yeah. He hears a fact, and then he just runs. Can away. we talk about that? There's not much to talk about. <laughs> I you, think I recorded. Three songs. What were the titles of Hell the tracks? Yeah. Do you remember? I, no, I don't know. Ian knows it's a little bit of some. You courses, know but... about the title of the song? <laughs> <laughs> you know he's lying oh, though. Man. Yeah. Like that tribal baby. tattoo just above your crotch. What was the title of the song? <laughs> after After you broke up with a girlfriend, you would make a. You'd go to the I, studio I, and you just yeah, and that's how. That's but then how, you'd release it. That's how I got over it. Well, yeah, I released it hoping she'd get back with me because I was like good, and? good with rhymes. And no, not. <laughs> Not yeah. one time did it work. The guy that I wrote about, he like still brags about it today. Like it's funny. Yeah, my girlfriends are not bragging about it. <laughs> are they diss tracks? Uh, I don't know. No, no, they're love they songs. weren't. They're, they're like love pretty songs. simpy stuff. I know though. Yeah, yeah. So. But you would you let me play them on the edit of this? Play them. You'd send them to me. I'll send them. To the you. audience can cue and listen to it. Sure, they can. Wow, that's we nice. To too bad we which, couldn't hear right now. Which they track were, is the favorite? They were so good. My sister said I was her favorite. Rapper. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my, I'm, I'm my mom's favorite rapper. <laughs> <laughs> like a seven year old boy in like a shirt that says like my mom's favorite rapper. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my mom doesn't. She's like she she's supportive. Does she like rap? No. My mom got into like Macklemore. She likes like Macklemore. Oh, shout out Macklemore. So she's like easing her way in. Yeah. I'll get her to rock him eventually. Yeah. Yeah. I just posted a photo with him. You met him? Yeah. Oh, was he Very cool? Nice guy, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That's the thing too. Like he didn't break those 30s. Like. Oh, yeah, but he got canceled about something. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. there was like a moment. Oh, maybe we won't be like. <laughs> I don't remember what <laughs> it was. It but he's coming back now. Oh, okay. From being canceled. Yeah. You can only, a, you can only keep a white rapper dad for so long. <laughs> slide right back in. He's Ooh. been renewed, so to speak. Yeah. Well, his daughter directed his like most recent music. Oh, that's video. cool. And she's like young, yeah. She's two. She's just pointing at things. He's like, <laughs> punch in on that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never wanted to pursue a career in music at all? You never fantasize about... No, no, I have. I was rapping. I'd be rapping. You've written some raps? Oh, like, yeah, when I was six and seven years old. Uh, <laughs> six and seven? And you're, yeah, you're writing you're writing about school. School sucks. Yeah. Exactly. They don't pay me bucks. Yeah, yeah. I still uh, remember to this day how to go. 
Yeah? Yeah, man. TikTok to TikTok to TikTok to boom, you gotta wake up and meet your doom. Wow. And dig in with a nice big spoon. And then I had my brother, my sister sing the hook. <laughs> you had this thing fully produced? I got news to you. No, this, no, no, no. This it was song? Not, it was not, not a hit. My job. <laughs> oh, no. I was six years old. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we were just kids messing around. Um, I used to say that every guy has a hidden folder on their computer oh, definitely. called raps. Definitely. Like, no one's allowed to see. It's just a bunch yeah. of like notes. And that was Honestly, that was my career right there. Oh, sorry. It's good. I, mean, I think you should have pursued it. Obviously, I should have, yeah. Before I was in a relationship and I'd go on dates with guys, I'm not even exaggerating this. Every guy would rap to me. Oh, God, that's amazing. Every yeah. single guy. They'd want to show rap. that they could freestyle? Yeah. That's awful. Every Were any guy. good? <laughs> No, just my boyfriend now. Right. <laughs> um, no, they weren't. That is so embarrassing. Every... How soon into the date would they be like, hey, I can actually spit a little bit? Usually like the first couple hours. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I don't know what it was. And me and my friend, my best friend laugh about it all the time. Just like Dating they a would rapper. sneak it in. Like, I, I don't hey, know. Hey, waiter, can you, can you beatbox real quick? <laughs> this is a coincidence. <laughs> but every single guy that I went on dates with would rap to me. That is hilariously embarrassing. Yeah. Would they get the check or no? Pardon me? Would they pay for dinner after yeah. the rap? Yeah. Or they're yeah. rapping yeah. the whole time and they're just <laughs> sliding it over towards her? Yeah. Would they do that the same thing that they do to comedians? Like, are you going to rap about this later? Or you gonna, oh, uh, yeah. Or tell me a joke. Tell me a yeah, joke. Tell me, tell me a, a funny joke. joke. Oh, you're a rapper? Tell, yeah, uh, rap yeah. for me. Dude, yeah, and that's the other thing. Like, people would always be like, rap for if Yo, you're, you're a rapper. And, and people, like, look at me and be like, you're not a rapper. Mm. Rap for me. You don't Prove it. Like Dance a rapper. monkey. Yeah. <laughs> So it's funny. And you just like go on Spotify. <laughs> yeah. And I used to back at when I like first started, I was like, yeah, and I'd rap for people. But right. Like, now I'm just like, Can you... that was your Kanye <laughs> standing on the yeah. tables moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you split a lot of your time between Toronto and LA? Well, I've only been in LA once. Okay. And that was last, I went for Grammy week last February. Sweet. So I'm going to try and go this February again. Yeah, cool. Good time to get out of the city to Toronto. February. Yeah. I just, I just love it there. Like, if I could, if it was easy to get a visa, like, I'd be gone. Yeah. 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 Sweet. It's, it's, Toronto's just ain't it. <laughs> it's a tough city. It's a real tough city to, to perform in. Um, it's just, I think everyone is so, uh, they're struggling. Everybody's struggling, so they stay at home. Uh, and they're only excited to see big acts come through. That's the only time, like, they'll come out to see, like, want to see Taylor Swift or, um, mm. Do you know that lobster story, the lobster fisherman, the Canadian lobster in the bucket? Are you talking about chaos? Grabbing I'm going to butcher this, but it's a great little metaphor. Mm. This American fisherman and this Canadian fisherman are at the end of a dock, both hunting lobsters. One's full of Canadian lobsters, one's full of American lobsters. The American one has a lid on it. The Canadian one doesn't. And the American fisherman's like, hey, why don't you put a lid on, uh, on your lobster bucket? Aren't you worried one of the lobsters is going to escape? And he says, if one of the lobsters tries to get too high, don't worry, the other lobsters will pull him back down. Huh. And it was, you know, kind of about the Canadian industry of like tall poppy syndrome. It's like, oh, who do you think you are? You're doing this. We're going to make sure that you politely like come back down to earth and just That's like get true. in line. That's and true. yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people here just like because it's so small, like the industry is so small, like they see one person doing something and then they're just like, why didn't, why didn't I get that? Mm. You know, and like, and they're just like, yeah. deter not, not enough to go around type of situation. Mm. Yeah. Which isn't true in, in entertainment, in anything like as, as, as much as you want to you make, yeah, you make your own, especially with TikTok. Like people want you to be, I heard this recently, but people want you to be successful, but just not more successful than them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I know we've probably all felt that in some point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty upset about your rap career if I didn't take off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, but to me, I don't feel like I'm successful. But like the other person looks at me and they're like, yeah, like you're successful. But I'm looking at like. She puts her album of the year trophy right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the next person and I'm like, I want to be like that person. Mm -hmm. that's but that's why good. It's you're so hungry. Toxic. Yeah. Yeah. It's toxic. <laughs> no, well, I mean, there's a certain level of like, I think a little competition's good. Yeah. A little bit of like, because otherwise you're complacent. Yeah. But yeah, when it becomes resentment and just anger and jealousy, no. But if it's like, oh, wow, that inspires me, they're kicking ass. Yeah. Because then if someone else does it, it's proof that you can do it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I used to be really jealous of other Canadians who would go down and have a lot of success in LA. Uh -huh. And then I realized I'm like, oh, I should be the biggest fans of these people because they're showing that like, it's possible. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And people always think that like, there's a limit to like this shit, but like, everybody can can become mm -hmm. what they want you know except for you scott 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> Drag me back down in the bucket. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Yeah. Don't go in, don't go nowhere. What's uh, what's fun about uh well Los Angeles is that yeah, everyone kind of is trying to do the same thing. So they, they support and they're like and it's hard. The whole the whole thing is hard and they all kind of respect that it, it's hard. Yeah. But that being said, like I did have like people like a team in LA when I went there and they're just like you're you come here and you're like and you're competing with 10 times the, or 100 times the amount of people that you're competing with in Toronto but it just doesn't make sense because like there's so much more opportunity in LA and and people that are going to see your stuff more, more than Toronto. I also feel like if you're good like anybody can just decide in the US to move maybe they're like a prom queen or something it's more I guess for acting but similar for uh music where they can just drive there and decide and tell so, telling people they're a musician. Yeah. But like if you're actually you know actually have an album or you're actually putting work in immediately suddenly the competition gets thinner and then yeah. it's like okay but you can actually sing then it gets thinner like it, there are really ways that yes there are more people pursuing it yeah but i think like if you if you're good you can really stand out too at the same time yeah it's also hard in the music industry because you got the record labels that have millions of dollars to back you like compared to like an independent artist like i pay for everything myself mm -hmm. like those budgets like those are the budgets that you want to get right but it's like then you're strapped into that record label and, you, and they could shelf you like there's mm. so many risks that that it takes right yeah so you just uh, being independent i encourage like for the longest time until like you can't anymore but money's a big thing turns well, out yeah this whole time money pretty important <laughs> pretty important you gotta have you gotta have those monies to to back you up what, what's the What's the best thing that would be? Well, I guess the money, like the marketing budget, the advertising budget, like to yeah. to, to promote your. Yeah, your because stuff. like I have connections just... in the film industry that can like I can shoot a video for relatively cheap, mm -hmm. and you know do all these things like shout out Jeff Hanley. We just shot a video at Astrolab. Like he did it completely like on goodwill and wanting to like create with me, so we did that, and then I put all the the budget that I had for that video into advertising. Right. Right. So like, nice. yeah, you gotta, you gotta kind of, as an independent artist, like figure out like which, where your money's going. And especially with like studio time, wardrobe, ma makeup, like yep, it's, cost, as a yeah. woman, like it's, it's costly. It's, it's not a cheap hobby mm -hmm. to do. And with the streaming platforms, you're not making much back. You, the only way you make money really as an independent artist is merch and shows that are actually going to pay. These four hundred dollar haircuts aren't gonna pay for <laughs> they, they are. Scott will cut your hair. Four <laughs> bucks. <I> feel it. <laughs> You'll save it. Well, you, they can find you at Rax on all platforms. Yeah. R A X X. R A X X. And your new album just came out this spring. Yes. And the new music you. video is doing numbers on YouTube. Yeah. It's I good. saw. I got jealous. I was like, <laughs> "Come back down in the bucket. This is too." Well, good. that's because like I I put so much advertising into like my Instagram, which will bring viewers to the YouTube. Yeah. You know? Smart. So like you gotta figure out like ways to like you agreed to do our shitty show pardon me you agreed to do this show no uh, you're I would like love maybe to one listener <laughs> but that's the thing you got to always say yes to things even like like even when if it is in a, no this is a great <laughs> <laughs> you got a best buy discount for the for but the audio you guys have here. a different avenue as to like let's say like we love hip-hop you know like all the, the we love hip-hop viewers are the same as all these other different things like you guys have a different audience so totally like as an artist you should go to these different avenues because i could gain three viewers that are, yeah are... and it's worth it yeah I, I can already see the mean comments from your audience being like who is this fucking piece of shit <laughs> talking about rap this guy's the guy critiquing now yeah this guy's saying it started Lil kim so i'm looking forward to those mean comments yeah write a mean comment below yeah please write a mean <laughs> comment that's what we need that's our show don't like don't subscribe and don't look for racks on Spotify. <laughs> this has been a Pagliacci podcast. <laughs>